the one and all to this fun competition. Except nobody knows if there's any opposition. Face so friendly, smile disarms, everything's good. No cause for alarm, cause I'm like you, and likewise the same. But for you, this is work, and for me, it's a game. Give a thumbs up if you know what I'm saying. Next round starting, believe that I'm playing. Introductions not needed, been completed, so to speak. Welcome to the social engineer.org podcast number 40. <laughs> Thanks, Dave. Uh, a, you know, a little preemptive. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. sorry it's been a while since I've been on, so I had to. I, anyways, go, keep going. I'm sorry. No, no, it's been months and years since you've been on, so you may have forgotten the format, you know? That's yeah, that's right. That's right. Sorry, I got a little gun shy there. I apologize. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. no it's okay. Thanks, Dave. Thanks. Uh, it's okay. We're filming anyway because we didn't get a chance to do our, our live podcast um, while out there uh, because we had that awesome stuff happen with Apollo Robbins. So. Uh, we didn't get a chance to do the live one, so we're just kind of filling in a nice, quick one here with our group. So we got Michelle. Hey, Michelle, how are you? I am doing just great. Still recovering, though. I think my brain melted about halfway through last mm-hmm. week. Yeah, melted is a good a good word. And uh, Dave, how are you? I'm doing great, man. It's good to be back on. I uh, had a great time on Vegas, hanging out with everybody, and uh, I'm 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 ready. I'm I'm not recovered yet. No, I don't think anyone has recovered. No, it's it's. I don't know. It takes like at least two weeks to get recovered from yeah. uh, that kind of thing. Isn't that yeah. odd? I don't know why that is. And plus, I'm all out of hugs to give. I, I don't have any left in my hug bag. No, no. You, exactly. you, I always have hugs to give. Oh, uh, I'm out. Yeah, Michelle is definitely out. She's over hugged. Yeah. Um, when I come back from DerbyCon, I don't need like like two weeks to recover. No, no, Derby. Well. Yeah, you also have to figure too, Chris. I mean, we're out there training. Uh, we're doing the whole black hat thing. We're out there for like you know ten days, and yeah, it's that's that, true. That's a, you know, Derby's only three or four or five, depending on what you do. Um, so it's not as bad. But I, I tell you, I mean, for some reason, Vegas just takes it all out on me. I mean, I'm I'm just dead. It does. Vegas Vegas sucks your soul out. Yep, sure does. But anyhow, that's a whole other topic for another day. That's right. Today we're just kind of going over. About Vegas, basically, what happened out there? How how, how things were? How was uh, your class? How did it go, Dave? Awesome, uh, great turnout. Had some great feedback. Um, you know, I think I think overall it was a very very overwhelming success. And uh, you know, you and I were right next to each other, so we battled each other out, screaming each other's lungs with the classroom. So I thought it was great. <laughs> are, are you about done? Are you about done? I. <laughs> See, this is why our podcasts go hours long. This is why, Michelle. This is why. <laughs> I was wondering if that was me. I thought, no, no, that's not you. That's definitely... Let's just keep playing a sound effects because Chris can turn his phone off. <laughs> so, anyhow... It's <laughs> uh, good to have Dave on. <laughs> All right, I'm done. Anyhow, anyhow. Dear God, I thought you were done. Anyhow... Anyhow, anyhow, I heard. (laughs) 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 Oh, I heard that the best part of your class was being next to an awesome class. I I didn't quite hear that. Um, In fact, fact, I think it was the exact opposite. They were kind of annoyed that they were next to um, an obnoxious class. But that's just what I heard. I mean, I... Well, what I heard... At least what I heard through the grapevine, uh, I don't really know this firsthand, but when your students were coming out of your class, they were like, wow, I wish we were in that fun class next door. <laughs> but I, I but don't know. It's you know. Kind of, it depends on what you see as fun. I mean, if it's just talking the whole day and you know lectures and things like that, then, then your class is definitely fun. But if you're like talking about <laughs> compromising machines and hacking into organizations and profiling some of the biggest companies in the world and becoming a pen tester, then, then yeah, I completely agree. Mike can be totally boring. You're right. You're right. I guess, if, I guess if you're talking about the same class that everyone else at Black Hat is doing, your class would be fun. <laughs> But if you're talking about profiling human mind and the psychology of how social engineers work, I guess our class would be more fun. That's messed up, man. That's messed up. I, I, mean, I like to think I differentiate a little bit, but I mean, yeah. Look, I had to fight somehow, okay? And it had to get dirty at some point. I mean, seriously. I, I couldn't just let, I couldn't let that one walk. Come on. Uh, all right, all right. No, no, I did hear good things about your class. I did. Oh, no. Oh, no. You're going to turn Michelle into a tiny little green rage monster. Yeah. Yeah. Just keep, just keep, just keep going with the podcast. Let it flow. Let it flow. No, Come on. no it doesn't flow. It stops. No, it doesn't flow. Listen, and keep going. I'm going to uh. throw myself through a wall right now. <laughs> 
All right, let's, we'll just wait for the intro, and then I'll, then I'll turn it off. All right, hang on. I just got to hear this one part. No, no. The, the, the people want to talk about other things. Okay, Chris. So anyhow, Michelle. Chris, yes. <laughs> I think you and I should... <laughs> All right, all right, sorry. Oh, this is he, he is disruptive like a child, like like a child that seen too many pixie sticks is disruptive. It's amazing. You know what I what I what I don't get is why people continually <laughs> listen to our podcast. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, then Dave goes away for a few months, and then I understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like they actually get some useful stuff out of the ones where I'm not on. No, they always miss you though. Isn't that weird? When you're not there, people email me. They're like, "Hey, where's Dave been?" Well, you know, hey, so so I think I think I've kind of played out Bruce Hornsby a bit, and and I will admit that. So oh. you know, I'd like to say that I got a new video that I'll be playing, or a new new song video I'll be no, playing. It's, no. it's one of my most favorite ones, also. No. Um, and so I'd like to introduce this now. It's- no. <laughs> I can't wait for this. Oh, I love this. Oh. Zen, that's the new one, man. Oh, that, that wouldn't have made me want to kill him. Yeah, see? All right, Chris, so keep going. Keep rolling the podcast, bro. No, we Seriously. can't roll with the podcast. I can't talk over this. I barely have a voice as it is. All right, hang on, hang on. Let me, let me, lower, the, let me lower the volume down a little bit. Hang on. There you go. go. <laughs> oh, man. I tell you. I love it. To all my listeners who are faithful, I am sorry. <laughs> I am very, very sorry. Anyhow. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> all right, with that. Mm-hmm. That's the same Okay, go ahead. Sorry, I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> We're already having fun. Oh man! I, you know, someday I'm just gonna release Michelle on you. <laughs> you right. did see that I beat up a, a drunk Asian man in the CTF room, right? You did. That's, yeah, I have yeah, pictures to prove. Amazing. Yeah. Now, I don't understand why you got to throw the Asian thing in there, but I mean, it could have just been a drunk man, but that's fine. No, because he, cause he came in all Kung Fu style. He did. He came in, he was like, oh, I can't hit a woman with my Kung Fu. And then Michelle decided to ask him which style he wanted to use and went through four or five, and then he got afraid. And, and then literally I have a video of him choking out. Like he was cho- I'm like Michelle. Please don't kill a Def Con person. Please, <laughs> please, 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 please don't. He just fell yeah. down. It wasn't even really a. He didn't uh, fall down. You were choking he, him. He did fall down. You were choking him. He went. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that is not the sounds of someone falling. Falling <laughs> is like this. <laughs> oh, that's yeah. falling. Yeah, he did make a funny noise. I was a little concerned about that. Yeah, but. that's the noise. Yeah, you need to be careful with that type of stuff. Yeah. You know, that, that kind of noise is the noise that people make when their esophagus is getting collapsed. I've heard it before. It's the sound of angels. Uh, anyhow, we're no longer the Social Engineer Podcast, but I don't have ping. Where's my ping? Ping, I miss you. I, I really miss you, Pink. I mean, it's just amazing when you're watching the video. It's like a comic book, and he reaches out, you know, and like you know, <laughs> puts her into the comic book, and like they had this whole love story. It's just amazing. I'm, I'm really excited. So anyhow, for <laughs> us, uh, Vegas was quite eventful. It was uh, really, really good. Our class was excellent. Our our students were phenomenal. We uh, added a new feature into our class, which was uh, live engagements, which really was was pretty awesome. Um. And then we moved over to, uh, to, to DEF CON, which just was phenomenal. I don't even know how to describe it. I think this is the first year that every parent that was involved in the SECTF for Kids came in and thanked us. Which oh, was dude, I, mean, I, think, I think what you're doing there is amazing. I mean, you know, we're only on this, this earth for a real short period of time and teaching our next generations what we need to do to make sure it's done right. And, uh, and that was really cool, man. Yeah, it was really. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. It was, it was our best year yet, and the SECTF room was packed constantly. Oh, Jam packed. Like there were, there was times where like there was a line going from the outside and you couldn't even get into it. And people were just sitting all around the room. The room was like a million degrees. I mean, it was. Damn. It was. It was, it was so damn. hot in that room, and then I felt bad because Michelle was still hugging guys who haven't bathed in in, in like forever. Yeah. And they were all coming in just to hug her and laying, <laughs> you know waiting around. And it was kind of funny to watch her. It was just pretty nasty. Yeah, that was me jumping on the grenade for the team, man. Yeah, well, you did it. You did a good job. I mean, there was people lined up just to hug the Asian. That's what they were saying. 
Well, I, I gotta tell you, I mean, I was I was pretty I was pretty ripe um, one day, like because uh, I <laughs> presented twice, and then I had to do the uh, hacker pyramid, and I was just sweating the whole time. And you know, I went home. I just I, I I literally took a taxi home, showered, and then came back to DefCon because I just felt ripe. Well, you were ripe every day. You were near me. That's not true. Well, I mean, I, that was because I was passing gas next to you. The entire oh, time. oh, that's great. That's Thanks. normal for me. Thanks, Dave. Thanks. No problem. No problem. Dave, so, you know, we had a question, a serious question come up at DEF CON. Yep. How come you can't awkward hug girls? How come it's only guys? I, well, see, here, here's the thing. I don't, I don't awkward hug anybody. I don't, or I don't... long hug, whatever you want to call it. All right. Well, so that, that's, that's, a fair, that's a fair question. And so when I, when I started the whole um, hug movement thing, you know, it really it was, it was because guys were really standoffish and things like that. And they would shake your hand and you never talk to them again. And the reason why I started doing the um, the hugging is to make it more memorable and, and become kind of more on a personal level. So, you know, it really started off with guys, and I, you know, there really isn't that many females in uh, the security industry. So it, it's it's actually kind of awkward for me to hug a girl because I've done done hugs to so many guys. Lucky I didn't say I was going to say something else there, but um, <laughs> so you know that that's kind of how it's described. There's nothing wrong with that. Right? I don't have anything against it. It's just I, you know, there's so, you know, we're such a male dominated force um, that all the hugs that I've ever given typically were were on the guy population, but. I, I hugged everybody. I hug everybody, no matter what. I, I, I hug girls. I hug guys. I hug you know everything in between. I hug you, Chris, which is I don't know what you classified as, but um, <laughs> you know there's no problem there at all. So, so what I'm hearing is that you enjoy hugging guys. I do enjoy hugging guys. Yeah, he hugged me. I, I did, and and you know what? I had no problem with it. it wasn't weird. I, I got pictures that I'm going to be sending to Aaron, by the way. <laughs> hey, Aaron, Aaron's fully aware. Trust me. No he did caveat there. that with the fact that he was married and he was a little uncomfortable with it, so I had to respect him for that. <laughs> yeah, that's great. So you you hug a guy so long, and then you reach down and, and do a butt cup, and then with a girl you have to caveat that you're married, so you don't want her to feel awkward. Well, no, I. <laughs> well, I mean, even you know, the the butt cupping only happens to a certain amount of individuals, and I actually introduced um, a couple of kisses on the cheeks this year at DefCon too. Uh, uh, I gave uh, uh, Jay Cran a kiss on the cheek. I gave um, actually, you know what? Um, at the three hundred three party, I kissed Deviant on the lips. That is not really good at all. <laughs> <laughs> it was more of a respecting, though, you know, friendship. Uh, well, uh, okay, we really have digressed down a hole that I don't know if we can fix. Yeah, do we have a guest today? We do. We have a guest. Okay. As a matter of fact, there, there's some really, really great news for us. This was the first year ever that we had a woman win the social engineering CTF. Yeah. Yes, it was quite amazing for us. We were, we were happy. We were very, very happy. And um, not only did she win, um, she, went, she went beyond the whole winning. <laughs> oh, Dave, I love you. She went beyond winning. She was 200 plus points above the next competitor in line. Wow. Yeah. That's incredible. It wasn't winning. It was like obliteration. She was like, suck it, CTF. Yeah. She was. Yeah. And the crazy part is she's not even in the IT security industry. That's epic. Yeah. So we're going to have her on shortly. She's going to talk to us about... A, being the first woman that ever won the SECTF, what she thinks that means, what her process was, because her report was phenomenal. She really knows how to do research and write for not being in this industry. It's, it's quite, quite amazing. And then, her, and then her phone skills were not lacking at all. She got on the phone, and she was just amazing on the phone, um, which, of course, that's something we need to discuss. So let us get Lily on. <laughs> Man, do you see what I have to deal with all the time? Yeah, it's kind of fun. Oh, please don't, don't. Thank you. Thank you. I'm gonna do it more often now. Don't. <laughs> Who pays you? <laughs> you do, sir. Oh, then don't support him. <laughs> He's a bad, bad man. He gives good hugs. I do, you know, and that talk I did, um, I, I thought went really well at the CTF. Oh my gosh! You know what? I will yeah. pause for a second there and say, we got we, and this is no joke. We got a lot of great feedback on you and Jordan. A lot of I was really, 
I didn't know how it was going to work, right? Because we didn't never had speeches in the SECTF room. And having the first year of having the village, I was hoping yeah. people would stick after the calls were over. And the room was more packed. It was. It was. You guys, like, sold out the room. It was completely packed. We were turning people away. Jordan did awesome, too. Man, really good. Really good stuff. Both of the speeches were just phenomenal. You you guys, um, it, it was it was great. I'm, I'm looking forward to next year now more than I, I was in previous years. Yeah, you know what I liked about it, um, especially at the DEF CON side, is it wasn't too big. You know, like you could, you know, I think I had probably forty-five minutes of questions. Yeah. And uh, you know, people were just asking different questions and how to do things. It was more intimate than I think you know a very large crowd, which I really enjoyed. And what, what about that kid that was just like spanking you left and right? No, listen. Let, let's just be honest. All right, the kid was insanely in, in intelligent and smart. He's got a lot to learn though when it comes to this type of stuff, which I'd expect. Um, well, he was nine, dude. He was, Nine. Asking, he was 14, by the way, and he was asking Nine. questions. Okay, 14, and spanking you. Dude, it wasn't even close to a spanking in any way, shape, or form. <laughs> it, it, was, it was spanked. <laughs> now, what are you talking about? What did he spank you me on? Oh, man? there was, like, questions he was asking, and you were like, well, I, oh, well. Well, no, uh, one, uh, one of the questions he had, which was a legitimate question, was, why did you put bolding or emphasis on one of your emails um, wouldn't that draw attention? And I said, absolutely. And that's actually what I wanted to happen is I wanted attention to be drawn on the keywords and highlights um, of the actual message. That's not a spanking. That's 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 legitimate, you know, experience right there working on you know social engineering engagements. The kid asked great questions um, and, and had some great great, great point ideas and different ways that you can do things. And that's the great thing with social engineering is there's a million different ways to co- accomplish your different goal. I'm with you. I'm with you. I just think that kid was seeing you. But that's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. For the future, let us delete the word spank from our vocabularies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and just for that, I'm bringing back an oldie but a goodie. <laughs> it provokes my envy. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why? Why does it provoke envy? I'm not saying. Envy? Try Wait. To... Envy? Envy? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just catching on. <laughs> Sorry. Can we please get our guest on now? Ping, ping, ping's, uh, ping's late. Yeah, so hang on. I'm putting her in now. Can you hear me okay, by the way? Yeah, you sound okay. All right. Am I, is it, do I sound sexy? <laughs> it's yours. Hello. Hey, Ping. Ping! Oh, that, geez, thanks for joining. I know it's a burden for you to get on, on the call on time and everything, but uh, good it to hear a, from you. I haven't... It's a huge burden. <laughs> You, you have no idea what I have to do in order to get on one of these calls. She has to rearrange I mean, her life. I do. I mean, you know, I mean, you know, me, me. I was actually uh, five minutes early. I uh, sent an email to Chris, or uh, sent a message to Chris saying, "Hey, whenever you're ready, I'm ready." Um, you know, I was very punctual on time, but I, yeah, I can understand you're kind of important. You know, I just. Well, the thing is. Does your five minutes early make up for all the many minutes that you've missed? The I, don't, I don't know why. You, I don't know why you got to bring all that up, okay? Because that's that's kind of irrelevant at this point. Right, right. Because in Zen, the past and the future is hell and misery. Only now in the moment does it matter. Only oh. now in the moment can there be happiness. We're we're on the same wavelength. You know, the, the past doesn't matter. It's just right about now and. You know, I was on time, and it was kind of nice. You know, it's it's nice, you know, being here and kind of getting, you know, to to, to talk to everybody and our experiences at DEF CON. It was it was amazing conversations we've had today. So, do you feel that you would like to be on time more often or early? Actually, <laughs> oh man, you know, I gotta just say, regardless of how it makes Michelle feel, um, you're getting spanked. <laughs> you're getting spanked once again, Dave. How am I getting spanked? How oh, am I getting spanked? Because, because you're, you're, I'm the witness. You're, you're, no, no, no. I, no, no, no. You're, you're trying to spank <laughs> Ping, but she is turning it back around and whipping you. That's not true. That's, that, that is, uh, you know what? It's a whipping. Okay. Wait, 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 wait. So, so new social engineer poll. Who was winning the argument? <laughs> up until the point that you said. Oh, it, it will be a poll for sure. People Let's do this. Let's email. Put a poll out there. Yeah, we're, we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna do it. We're gonna put a poll because this is definitely you are gonna you're gonna lose, Dave. Ping was Ping, no she, I was own in this conversation. Uh, I was I was running the whole show here. I'm sorry. Yeah, you know, I would love to see someone. You know, he he never did actually respond as to whether or not he intends to be actually attend a attend these in the future and b <laughs> actually be early so that he can participate in the you know. Pre podcast. 
Listen, you know, down all, I know, all I know is, is, you know, I had some great conversations with Chris and Michelle. It was amazing. And uh, and you were nowhere to be found. I mean, we, we, we tried contacting you, but, you know, it was it's, important. It's, it's probably not a good time to tell Ping that you're leaving early for another interview. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Wow. Wow. You Listen. really had different priorities in Ping, the corner, Kennedy. I gotta tell you, Ping, Ping, I gotta tell you something real quick. So so before this call started, Chris said make sure you give Ping heck for being late. Alright? So I was helping Chris out, but then he just violated my trust by dissing me. So you know what? Okay. what I, I really love is me. how you stayed through DEF CON for the podcast, and yet on Sunday morning, you left before the podcast <laughs> would have happened. Well, you know, you, you know why, right? I haven't seen my kids in four weeks. Oh, it's a, she's murdering Oh, God, me. here it goes. You should here stop. Go she, she's killing you, Dave. It's just, it's terrible. It's, ter- it's, it's, like, it's like a murder scene. You should stop. If you're in the you know, you know, I'm fine with that. Listen, I, you know, my loyalty just went away. So ping, 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 ping continue on. I'm, I'm cool with that. I'm not, I'm not giving you heck. You can show up late as much as you want. And uh, you know, I actually prefer to do you uh, to, to drive Chris nuts because I was just helping out. No, Dave, Dave, Dave. I was on your side. Until she just started to just turn everything around on you and destroy you. Why did she turn around? Oh, wait, There's no turning around. So what you're saying anything. is you just jump to whoever's winning. Is that what you're saying? No, Chris? that's not. Don't, they don't start on me. Chris, 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 Chris. Oh yeah, good job, Chris. Yeah, you're just gonna you're just gonna hop on the bandwagon for anybody who's winning. He's, he's Chris. Chris is like like to what what, what I read to refer of as I only hang around winners. Uh, well, that that is true. <laughs> I only choose to hang around winners so I can be a winner myself. That is true. We agree is Jordan with that. joining us today, or is he still next? Uh, Jordan is still late, but our but our guest is is waiting, so we can get her oh, on as right. soon as we're done yelling at each other. <laughs> all right. So, did we cover? What did we cover well, beforehand? Well, we we basically covered nothing because Dave played <laughs> Bruce Hornsby and made Michelle turn into a little tiny green rage monster. No, then, not, not oh only did I play Bruce Hornsby. No, not that I only played Bruce Hornsby, but I've also told the audience that I will no longer be playing that much of Bruce Hornsby, and we've we switched to Aha Take on Me. Okay, so it's now it's now Aha Take on Me. Yeah, yeah. So, all right. For, for about the next five seconds, we need an to be about you or Chris, and let the guest come on. All, all, I'm sorry. All I heard was we need to talk more about me. So let's just let's just keep it going. Okay, I'm adding her in. So. <laughs> <laughs> Let's let's just give her a second. <laughs> Dave. Is that a goat or is that a sheep? Doesn't matter. <laughs> well it kinda does. It does. Sheep are mindless. Goats I, 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 are I, actually I, very smart. They're quite clever. Well then it's a sheep. <laughs> yeah, I was doing, I was doing a sheep. Lily? I don't I don't hang around smart centric yes. animals. Hey Hi. Lily, how are you? Good. How are you doing? Okay, a little crazy here today. We uh, Dave is in rare form, and uh, so we have we have Dave with us. I had a Lily. Hey, Lily, how you doing today? Congratulations on the uh, the winning. Hey, thanks, Dave. Hey, I'm sorry I didn't get a chance to uh, to meet you in person at at DefCon. Yeah, same here. I apologize. I uh, ended up skedaddling uh, a little bit earlier, so uh, but uh, we'll definitely have to catch up next year. Congrats. Hang on, skedaddling. Thank you. Yeah, <coughs> skedaddling. Yes, this is a family-friendly podcast. It is. Chris. Okay, you're right. I'm sorry. Uh, that the one smacking me around is Ping, as always. Hello. Hi, Ping. How are you? Good. How are you doing? Good. Congratulations on winning the uh, SECTF. That's hey, huge thank kudos. you. And we have probably your biggest cheerleader on earth, Michelle. Hey, Lily. <laughs> that wasn't very big hey, cheerleading. Hey, Michelle. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to say once again a public congratulations for the total and absolute victimization of the men's team. <laughs> I'm victimization. Awesome. Yes. It's freaking awesome. I'm so proud of you. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> so, well, that was a. Uh, Wait, Chris, did yes. you do an introduction on Lily or yes? You know, so. so when, when we can calm Dave down, we actually had a chance to talk about Lily and and I, I was behaving. I was behaving right now, and um, and we were able to um, talk about her being the first woman ever to win the SECTF, and 
a bunch of other things that we, we were able to bring up. So we're going to end the questions that we have for her, of course, which now we'll get into. I just got to say, it's about time that, you know, a woman won this um, SECTF. I, mean, I agree. Us girls need to stick together. Us girls need to stick together and, <laughs> and really, you know, be a tight team because there's not enough women like us in this community. Dave, Dave. <laughs> I'm sorry, Lily. I, I apologize ahead of time for anything that happens on this podcast that may leave you scarred for the rest of your life. Listen, I, she's I've been listening to the podcast, so I'm, I'm, I'm ready for whatever comes. I'm ready for any Bruce Hornsby no, no, or whatever. No, don't, don't say that. No, <laughs> don't say it. I, just, she's just tough. I mean, if she won the CTF, don't, I mean, we don't need to handle her kick gloves. She can handle herself. <laughs> that, that is true. No, no. In all, in, all sincer- in all sincerity, I actually am happy that, that a woman won the, the CTF because, I mean, Statistically, we always see that women um, have a higher probability and success rate um, at social engineering than men do. Um, so it's very good to see that type of, of thing really actualized in this ETF. And I think it really brought it forward. I mean, you killed it. You killed it. From everything that I heard and saw, I mean, you killed it. Yeah. Thank you. No, she really yeah, did. Yeah, you know, I think one of the things is that there are so many so many different uh, paths or, or ways in which information can be gathered and for so many different purposes. Uh, you know, th- this contest, the SECTF, explored one aspect of the information gathering and, and one aspect of social engineering with, with specific goals and specific flags, targeting kind of the um, uh, the path that would then um, be used to have some kind of computer network operation or attack or, or whatever happen afterwards. But certainly there can be, um, you know, social engineering or information gathering for things like gathering um, IP from or intellectual property from companies and things like that. So I think there are so many different variables that um, yeah, I'm really happy to represent the women for this year. Um, but I, I I think it's hard to say if if one gender is better than the other or um, who's better at what. You know, this was this was one type, and also this was just over the phone. Um, you know, certainly in person, I think. Uh, there, it could be that different genders are more successful and, and over email as well. Heck no. In person, you're definitely going to beat us. Maybe maybe an email will win. And on the let's phone... Just, let's, just be, let's, just, let's just be honest. Definitely Chris. Oh, yeah. I mean, well, I, I have no problem admitting that. <clears throat> you could take the, the dag, nastiest, ugliest woman on earth and she'll still beat me in person. Because she's a woman. So that's all there is to it. And, and man. And man, <clears throat> by the way. But just throwing that out there. Well, you know. Anyhow, let's let's start with that. Um, let's start with that, Lily. <clears throat> when we're not going to link you to any particular company, um, you know, if you want to, you can. But we we usually try not to do that uh, when when we talk to contestants from the CTF. So without naming the company, what did you think when you got your target company? Uh, of course, it was huge. It was a it was a giant uh, Fortune 500 or bigger. So what did you think? starting the task of information gathering on on that target? <laughs> well, my first reaction, um, I know this is a family-friendly show, but it was a couple of expletives of, <laughs> uh, you know, <laughs> of, of what the company was. Um, so uh, what, I, what I did was, you know, I wanted to see what kind of information was out there. Um, uh, there were a couple lessons that I learned from this task. Or from this um, this aspect of the competition, uh, you know, I've I've been reading books on this, uh, listening to the podcast, and you know, there's tons of information out there of tools that are helpful for information gathering, as well as um, tips and techniques and methods for um, <clears throat> uh, gathering intelligence or whatever. Um, but just what I learned was just knowing those doesn't really do you any good by itself. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, you know, I I found that there was surprisingly actually a lot of information about my company online, and so needing to try to um, dig through and figure out what what was important, what were the nuggets of information that would really benefit me, especially for this particular task. Um, you know, making sure that I didn't go down too many rabbit holes. That was that became kind of a challenge, actually. And how did you? keep yourself focused and not go down because obviously once you start info gathering and your report just by the way was 67 pages and it was not dumps of information which was also interesting because a lot of times when we see massive reports usually it's dumps of information 
Um, so how did you keep yourself from going down all these different avenues and getting overwhelmed with information and lost in time? Because we only had two weeks to do this and write the report. My approach was to uh, come up with various themes. And then as I, as I learned information, I would bid it into a theme. And that theme may or may not have been useful in the future for, um, for actually writing the report. So there was plenty of stuff that got dropped off um, on the cutting room floor that you know wasn't applicable to uh, the contest or this this particular task, um, but there uh, you know there was a lot of other information out there that you know one could use in perhaps a malicious setting or whatever. But I, I basically um, tried to come up with or or as I was doing a blanket research of what was out there, come up with various themes that I saw, uh, write those down, and then try to go after those one by one. Um, you know, as I said, those flags kind of helped in um, focusing on directing my research. And then also, you know, part of it is coming up with what are the, um, you know, what are the um, security gaps or what are some of the um, awareness uh, holes that this company has online, but then also coming up with the pretexts. And so um, brainstorming what might be good pretexts to use and then trying to find information that would support that. Um, so I, you know, uh, back to the tools, I know a lot of people talk about tools like um, uh, Maltego, for instance, and, you know, I don't have a lot of experience with that. So I found that just pulling up that tool, not really knowing where to go without having a deep, extensive background in it, um, wasn't going to do me as much good as just reading through a whole bunch of blogs and, um, you know, social media sites that are kind of not the most popular ones um, to get more of my information gathering. I'm sure there's so much more that I could have gotten if I were more proficient in a lot of these um, high powered tools. So what would you, would you be able to label one tool as your favorite or as the one that you think was the best for you? I think it was the, you know, there are a couple social media sites, things like um, Reddit and Quora and Glassdoor, where people think that they can be anonymous. Um, and, you know, for the most part they are, and I don't really care about who the actual individual is, but they're, they're providing nuggets of information that, um, that uh, was really useful in getting specific lingo, um, lingo specific to the company. So then once I got that, those keywords that were unique to the company, I could use those in two ways. One for more information gathering by, by searching on that particular term. And then also when I was writing up my pretext, uh, you know, for those pretexts that I wanted to appear as an insider, I would then have that terminology that would be very familiar to the particular target I was going after. Now, um, you know, maybe you don't want to give us details on this, but what, you don't do this for a living, right? You don't, you're not in the IT, security, social engineering field for, for work. Correct. So this is something that you had to kind of just pick up just for this competition, these type of skills? Yeah, I, I would think that this type of information gathering for the specific goals and flags um, was, was unique. Um, and I hadn't had experience in that before. Um, you know, I think that there are a lot of skills that anyone could have, uh, regardless of what they do, that would be useful for this. I mean, just being a curious person and wanting to know more um, can lead itself to, to being helpful and useful. So now your call, was it, um, remind me, was it Friday or Saturday? It was Friday. Okay, so you had a Friday <clears throat> daytime call, and um, you, you, get, you get there, you see the room, probably at the time I remember you were going on, it was completely packed with standing room only. Uh, what are your feelings now about to get yourself ready to come up and do the coin toss and see who's going first? I was, I was pretty nervous. And I knew that I was going to be nervous. So um, I tried to put myself in a position of confidence that I could force myself into, into a, a position of confidence, even if I didn't really feel confident. Um, uh, How do you do that? One of the, so one of the things to – thank you for leading me right into it, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> one of the things I did to, to you know, both get myself mentally and physically prepared was to um, 
to do power posing. And I don't know if anyone in the room noticed, um, but power posing is basically standing in a posture of confidence. Um, it's something that um, Amy Cuddy from Harvard Business School did a TED talk on it back in 2012. And it's a great 20 mon 21 minutes of anyone's time to go check that out. But basically it's um, how body language and how the position of our body can affect the changes uh, in our body chemistry. And so uh, I stood in this power pose, specifically the Wonder Woman pose is what it's called, with your, you know, your feet hip distance apart, toes turned out, um, posture nice and tall, and then hands on the hips. And, and what power posing in general does is to um, decrease the level of cortisol, which is the hormone um, released in response to stress, as well as increase testosterone, which is, you know, the hormone associated with dominance and confidence. So I got my, my body into a position where it could uh, kind of trick the mind in essence that I was confident. And so that, that was one, one thing that I did um, right before the call. So you, you in essence, SE'd yourself into not being yeah. nervous. <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> I, I manipulated and I elicited, elicited some, uh, some responses that I wanted to get <laughs> for myself. Um, but, but taking a step back before that, I, um, you know, I had written up my pretexts and I kind of had, um, I wanted to be, be as prepared for that as possible for, for what I was going to do in the booth. So I, um, as I was writing out, I kind of wrote out a, a pseudo script. So basically what I wanted to say and how I wanted the call to go, knowing that things could change at any instance. Um, but I had, I had really gone through that, making sure that I, um, knew how I wanted the call to go. And then also I came up with um, all, all the possible pushback that I could think of. Um, so, uh, you know, any kind of resistance or questioning or pushback that might exist and possibilities or avenues that I might um, use to, to counter that um, and, and to prevent anything odd from happening. So this, um, is, this is an interesting topic because... <clears throat> That's another avenue where a lot of people could could fail, because if they go overboard in that, um, you get yourself stuck in this situation where you're trying to come up with so many scenarios that you're focused more on the scenario than you are on actually getting the job done. Now that obviously did not happen to you, because you were very smooth on the phone and you won. Um, so how did you keep yourself from becoming unfocused while still trying to plan out the call? And how it should have gone, it should go if everything goes right. Just to add, add a real quick thing to that. I mean, did you turn yourself into that person that you were trying to be? I mean, did you, you know, make yourself believe that you were, you know, um, that person that you were going to be on the phone for your pretext? Um, yeah, in essence, you know, I, I don't have, I don't do this for a living, um, and my background is technical, but I also have a background in theater, so I've done, um, you know, a, a bit of acting, and um, in acting. One method is called the method acting, where you do everything to be kind of become your character and become your person. And so there's what's called a backstory for that, where it's it has nothing to do with the lines or what's absolute what's actually happening, you know, on stage or in a scene. But it's everything that's happening behind the scenes, kind of in your mind of how you're the character and and everything that's led you up to this particular moment. Um, so that kind of backstory, which is the same thing as uh, a cover story or a pretext is, uh, you know, um, how we would call it here, was something that I was able to to draw from. I, I did have for a couple of the pretexts I had. Uh, well, for all of the pretexts I had who I wanted to be, um, some of them I was in, in essence myself. But for the one that I used for the competition, I was a particular employee. Um, I was able to find quite a bit of information about her, both personal and professional information about her online. Um, I knew that we were similar in, um, you know, education background, likes, uh, interests, that kind of thing. Um, and where we weren't similar, I was able to get a better understanding for her and then try to put myself in a place where, you know, I've never met her before. She's never met me before, but what I, what I would imagine for her to be like. Um, so that, that's one thing that I did. Um, and then in terms of your question, Chris, of how did I not get so caught up or consumed in what was going to happen or, you know, the story that I was telling, um, I, like I said, I had kind of this pseudo script, so I knew where it wanted to go. And then I had a, a separate 
kind of document with me of of the pushback of the or or how I would deal in situations where it wasn't going like I wanted. Um, surprisingly, actually, I was really surprised that I never had to go to that. I didn't. I wasn't questioned too hard on that, um, but I was ready for that. Um, and the other thing is, I tried to be as um, I tried to be conscious of needing to be as flexible as possible and and really going with the flow because that's what happens. You, you you can script it out, you can think about it, you can uh, you know play around with it as much as you want in your head or even just you know talking to you know your hairbrush in the mirror or whatever. But um, until you're in a situation, you really don't know how it's going to go, um, and and needing to be flexible and and rolling with the flow is important. Um, so another thing that I that I do is um, I take improv, and I find that that helped in well it helps in all situations. I think it helps in life in general, just um, with opening up and learning how to be vulnerable and fail gracefully in a supportive environment. Um, where everyone has your back and is is supporting you if you do fail. But it's also um, a good thing to practice um, reacting to whatever wonky or off the wall thing someone says to you or uh, how they react to something that, that doesn't go the way that you want. And, and that is true with DEF CON, isn't it? You, uh, you probably felt the same way, that people in the room are not there to see you fail. and They're not even there to see the companies fail. They're there because it's a curious nature of why this continues to work and how it works and the fascination at someone having the guts to get in the booth. So their support for the people, I find, is always invigorating for me. Uh, they, they don't want you to fail. You know, when, when that one poor person was in the room, they didn't have any good numbers. The whole room was cheering her on and looking for numbers for her to call. And, and people were, you know, were, were just there to, to support that, that caller. I thought that was really interesting. Totally. Totally. I totally agree. You know, one thing that sticks out, stick, sticks out in my mind, there was a time when there was a caller in the booth and the, the target that they were calling was asking about what the latest version of Adobe was. And um, the caller didn't know. And then I saw someone in the audience raise up their fingers, giving, you know, the latest version number <laughs> so that um, the, the, the caller could then tell the victim or tell the target, um, oh, it's, you know, it's version blah, blah, and, and then roll off as if he knew it the whole entire time. Yeah. Yeah, that's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I, I found that interesting too. So <clears throat> the um, the obvious question, you being the first woman ever to even place in the top two for the last five years of the SECTF, you're the first woman to ever place in the in the first or second place. Um, I'm not sure if I mentioned this to you, but you didn't just place in the top two. You were 200-plus points above the next person in line so it was it was a it like michelle likes to point out a complete domination of of the competition <laughs> how how does that make you feel um <laughs> it you know it makes me feel uh it makes me feel really awesome um and i i love my black badge i think that's that's very cool too didn't know how everyone else was doing obviously and so i just did as well as i could do um always had in the back of my mind that someone out there was probably finding more information than me. So I needed to keep, keep searching. I think that that makes me feel really good. I, I also think that, um, there were some amazing competitors and I, I, I thought the competition, you know, was, was pretty fierce, uh, at least in the booth. So it was, it was great to, to meet everyone. And, and you're right. I think it is a very supportive community. So, Lily, um, this is Michelle. Was there anything about the competition that surprised you? This is your first year, and so you probably had all sorts of expectations, but was there anything in particular that that was unexpected for you? I think what I was most nervous about when I was calling this company, it's a company that's um, pretty involved in technology. Uh, it's it's um, more or less at the heart of what they do, um, and not necessarily a technology that I was all that familiar with. So... I was, I had some trepidation in being able to come across as um, someone who knew her stuff as an insider, as, as a fellow employee. Um, I, I really expected right off the bat to be called out right away for saying something wrong or, uh, or um, something that just didn't fit. Um, so that, that did surprise me, you know, calling another 
or calling a tech company, you kind of expect or think that everyone there is going to be on top of their game and, and know everything about tech and, and really be able to call out the, um, you know, the BS uh, of, of someone who doesn't know their stuff. That, I think that surprised me the most. So I have a question, which is, I don't, I'm not aware of any other social engineering CTFs, but I didn't know if you participated in any before in preparation for this one or what other kind of practical things you did to prepare yourself for the competition. I mean, did you come and watch uh, the competition in the past or talk to people who had? Yeah, no, I, I hadn't talked to anyone who had done it in the past. Uh, last year was my first year at DEF CON, and I, I didn't even know that um, the SECTF existed or, or really that, that a community of people interested in social engineering and social engineering awareness existed at all. Um, I really stumbled into it from just, you know, uh, someone who mentioned that this thing was going on. It was something that I thought sounded interesting, and so I, I wandered in last year and um, saw a couple of the phone calls. Uh, that That's really my experience with this type of competition or this type of um, uh, experience. It's not, that's interesting um, <clears throat> because I think this year we had a larger number of people who have never done anything like this before than previous years. Uh, even though we did have some, uh, we had a few, we had a handful that had not only done this kind of work before, but have also taken part in the CTFs before. So it was it was an interesting for us because we wanted to make sure that, as in previous years, we we chose a lot of people that we know were skilled and experienced. Um, this year, we wanted to choose more that were not. You know that in the in when you fill out the form to to register, um, that that rated themselves at not having done this previously because we wanted to see how they would fare against these massive companies, you know, these Fortune 500, 1,000 companies, and then uh, putting a person that, that has zero experience in doing this previously into the, into the booth and seeing if they would fare just as well or better um, than, than those that, that didn't. And what was um, interesting for us is, again, you had no experience, and the second place winner has some IT experience, but it's, she doesn't do this for a living either. So we had for both the, the, the first place and the second place winner both being women, which, again, is, is a first for us, and both of them not being experienced social engineers was a first for us. Uh, so both of those things kind of fascinated us to see how it played out this year. Now, I got, yeah. I got a quick question. I got a quick question real quick here. Now, you know, you, you came out, you said you'd, you'd, you'd uh, researched the company, did a lot of uh, reconnaissance on them, and uh, you start coming up and formulating your pretext. Did those change as you went through, um, you know, and, and started getting your trophies? Did you manipulate and change your pretext in a way to, to kind of be fluent with the attacks? And, uh, you know, if you did, what was successful for you and what worked, um, you know, to, to get the information from the individuals? Can I just say, Dave, that was probably like the best question you've ever asked on any podcast in the last 48 months. Uh, I don't know whether to take that as a compliment or an insult, but uh, I'll <laughs> well, take it. You take it how you like it, but you know, <laughs> uh, I love you, buddy. <laughs> love you too, man. Love you too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, go ahead, Lily. Sorry. Dave, you mean um, as, as I was actually on the phone call or as I was researching, did I change um, how I was going to – the basically my write-ups for actually, the Actually, on the phone call, you know, I mean, you know, because when you're going through these type of situations, you know, you might have a, a DS set in your mind uh, about what you actually want to do, your pretext and your attack. But what you find in actuality when you're actually doing it, it may not necessarily go as you anticipated. And you have to kind of go on the fly to, to make sure that what your pretext is is still believable and what you're going after. So I guess my question is, did you really run into any hurdles, uh, what you found prior to your pretext? And did you change that based off of the communications you had? And what was most successful for you, um, and, and how you got your information, and, and you know uh, when you when you did your actual attack? Yeah, um, so I, I was I was pleasantly um, surprised that it went the 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 phone calls went how I had kind of planned them for for them to be. That being said, I was prepared, or I was I was as prepared as I thought I could be for. Um, how to veer off or how I would, um, I, I was prepared to be thrown off. Uh, and if I needed to, um, change the game plan, I had, um, 
try to mentally mentally prepare myself and also, you know, uh, physically prepare myself that 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 could happen and what I would do in those situations. Um, I also had that's kind of that that whole pushback backup thing that I had to, to go off of. Um, but I also. Um, uh, um, oh, then I, I also had, if the calls were going well, I was going to, uh, go after certain things that I, um, at the outset had not planned on going after. Um, you know, there were some flags that just didn't make sense for the particular pretext that I did. Um, but you know, I've, studies have shown that, you know, if you start getting someone comfortable and uh, you guys have talked about this on the podcast too, if you start getting someone talking about someone, if you go start get, getting someone talking about something, uh, make them feel really comfortable about asking questions. Uh, and then the weirder than weirder questions, you know, that person will tend to go and, and be more and more comfortable asking weirder and weirder questions. Um, you guys have said it a lot more eloquently than I just did. Um, but I basically had a plan for that of, um, well, if the call seemed to be going pretty well and I was getting what I wanted, I was going to go ask questions that really did not make sense whatsoever for why I would have called or why, given the, the technical aspect of this particular company, why I should be asking someone else about those things. Um, and they, it seemed to be that, you know, that the person that I called didn't really uh, bat an eye, it seemed like. Um, well, when I was coming up with the pretext, I tried to um, stack the cards in my favor as much as possible with coming, uh, being an insider, you know, being a fellow employee to put the put the target at ease, uh, really lower their guard. Um, you know, I wanted to make sure that I had a deadline or a short time frame, um, you know, saying that I just had a few minutes. I wanted to come from a place of pow power, um, which would... Um, make the target want to comply with what I was asking for, but then also not come from a place of ultimate power. So I would, you know, be able to say, well, I had a boss telling me what to do if, if I had gotten any pushback from what the target was asking or was um, asking about. And then also uh, putting myself in a place where I needed their help. And then also, uh, you know, as we say, trying to make them feel good, which is the ultimate goal of any kind of engagement. So I, I tried to do all of that on the back end to really make it where um, there would be, uh, I, I would be coming into this situation or I would be coming into the phone call from what I thought was a best possible position. And so we had, um, previous to talking to you today, we had an interview with uh, NPR uh, about the, the SECTF and they were asking about you and what what our feelings were on you winning. And I can honestly say this uh, to you, hopefully not blowing your head up too much, but what made us really happy uh, with the fact that you won is, is you've never been to our class, but you utilized the principles that we teach in our class. <clears throat> so that made us really proud that, that you won, because one of the things that we, we promote is that you can do the job of social engineering, and you can get people to give you unbelievable amounts, quantities, and types of information, and you can leave them feeling better for having met you. Uh, so someone can just pour their hearts out and tell you all about their life, their passwords, their everything, and when they're done, they don't feel buyer's remorse. And uh, you did that. You accomplished that. You didn't manipulate. You influenced. And you, you did it in a way that when you were done, that person on the other end of the phone it ha didn't have to feel bad about themselves or their job or anything. You know, you didn't threaten them. There was no um, actions that would make them later on wonder if their job was in danger. And even when the report comes out, that person's probably not going to realize that it was them by the way you handled yourself. And that, that's a really nice way of, of going about this because in the, in the real world, when we do this as for pen testing, that's the way we want to leave our customers feeling is that not that they feel stupid or bad or in danger, yep. but that they feel educated and they feel good about us. So that way that there's more chance that they will accept the education that comes. And as of, as of right now, we already have one, possibly two companies reaching out to us that were targets in the CTF saying, please tell us how, how you got the information, how it worked, and, and fill us in. Um, yep, and that's great. And that's, that's what we want to message. Yeah, you, exactly. That's the whole message. That's yeah. the message. It's the reason why we do this. 
And and having a winner like you means that we can tout this, we can we can promote this, and we can say, look, she did it, and she did it with without having to manipulate, without having to threaten, without having to use negative emotions on the phone call. Ping, ping, take take advice from this. <laughs> <laughs> Ouch! I am listening. Wow. <laughs> Why don't you reiterate what advice you would like me to take? Oh no! Thank you. Yeah, keep, keep keep going again, Chris. Start from the beginning. No, not from the beginning. But I just no, no, no. I, you are supposed to reiterate to me what advice you feel I should take, <laughs> Mr. Kennedy. Oh boy. Oh no, I was just agreeing with the top. I, listen, I, I wasn't saying it was related in any way, shape, or form. I was just saying, you know, just take some. You should you should listen to this if you weren't paying attention because you're really busy. You know, because you weren't on the podcast in time. So, but, uh, you know. <laughs> oh boy. No, but I agree. You know, positive enforcement, and you know. You know, when you're doing it, you're not making them feel bad. Um, you know, you're doing it in a way that that um, you know teaches your principles that you teach in your class, Chris. Yeah. And I think that's the key key points that you want to hit with that. And really, why social engineering.org was ever started uh, was to to, do, to have that positive reinforcement around social engineering, so that people are more um, positive to understanding and learning new things. Because if it's uncomfortable, if it doesn't make them feel right, they're automatically going to revert back to what they know. Um, so, you know, I couldn't and, agree more with the success of it. But. And, and I'm going to go and I'm going to open myself up for abuse from Dave because I had to admit I was wrong two years ago and Dave won't let it drop. But it just proves the point that social engineering does not always involve deception and that you oh, can – Oh, my God. I, I, I've been saying it for two years, okay? I I've been, on the floor just now. My legs gave up. I, I've been saying this for two years, <laughs> admi- admitting it to you. And Lily proved the point again is that – Okay, yeah, there was some deception on her part, but she was positive in the way she did it, and I guarantee you that that employee did not go home that weekend feeling bad about themselves or their job. And when the report comes out, I doubt they're going to even know that it was them. You know, the, the, how many calls did you make, Lily? Like three or four? Uh, uh, yeah, I made three. Three. So those three people that gave you all this information um, – and that was the other thing, actually. I want to stop there for a second and bring that up. This is something that you did that I th- that contributed greatly to your to your winning. Um, so any new contestants that are listening should should definitely listen to this part. Um, when you got the information that you knew was the peak of your points, uh, you knew that 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 what you got fit your pretext, and now anything else would have just been continuing the conversation and been just a few points here or there. You cut the conversation politely. You said, thank you, i got to go, and you right away had another number ready to make a second call. And then you did that on the second call, and then right away, bam, and you went to the third call. So you were able to get three times the points because you were prepared and ready to just keep going and not just rest on the first set that you got. Um, A lot of contestants come, they have one phone number, and that's it. One phone number, and they're done. And... uh, and and you you didn't do that. You came very prepared, and that I believe I believe in my heart that led to the the, the big part of your success besides the fact that you were just excellent on the phone. Well, well, you saw. I I think I had twenty nine phone numbers to call. Yeah, yeah, and you had twenty nine. Yeah, and you you came very prepared and a sixty seven page report, and you had probably and this is the other thing I will bring up um, uh, because it, it could lead to a good discussion and it's good for other contestants to hear. Every year, every year, we see people try, I'm a student, I want to do a survey, pretext. And every year, it fails. And we've been doing this five years, and for five years, we have people come in the room and try calling these Fortune 500s as a student and asking for a survey. And it's never once work. Now, we've had the student pretext work, um, but it it was last year's call. We had two, two young ladies try student pretext and they called the companies they were targeted asking for advice or help on their products because they were going back to college. Now that worked, but the student pretext asking for a survey generally fails every time. And we were curious this year how uh, it was going to be played out with with, uh, the young women that came into the competition and you didn't. You came with a very intelligent pretext Um, and without giving away the company, maybe can you just tell us what your pretext was? Uh, sure. I, um, uh, the one that I decided to go with, I I had, um, four 
pretext as an insider and then one as an outsider. And and I used one of the ones as an insider because as you said, coming from an out coming as an out, outsider uh, puts up some walls or, or raises some flags right away if you're asking for information. Um, so as an insider, I was calling from uh, the uh, real estate and development uh, area and um, looking to set up a new store um, or um, entity for this particular company. And I, uh, a, a team was going to come out looking for um, scoping out the best site uh, to have this uh, store or entity built up. And in the meantime, they were going to go to a, some of the local uh, local stores and um, just see how things were going there. It, it worked especially for me because uh, I had found um, evidence online that people actually do this uh, within my company. And the people, the, the boss that I referenced uh, does this as well. Um, so it, it was... It really um, it made it that much more believable, be, believable because in the back of my mind I could believe it so much more. I could really use that as my you know backstory or cover story or pretext because it's it, I could believe that that was my per, that was my boss um, because I had seen it there right online. Yeah, and that that really was a very intelligent pretext. And one of the things we teach in our class that will answer the question that you were talking about is people really don't care about the backstory. They, they don't. You know, we, we in our five-day class, every night we send out the students on live engagements. They have to go and basically do what you did but live in person, and they have to elicit information out of complete strangers. And we had a class in the U.K. that was really reluctant to try at first because they said this is not normal. Brits don't talk like this. They don't do it. We still made them go do it. By day three, they, they just still didn't believe the fact that people don't care about you. Um, they want to talk about themselves. So we, mm -hmm. we, we told them, come up with the craziest pretext you can imagine and introduce it into the conversation after you get their dopamine flowing. After you've built trust, you got the oxytocin going, you, you, you know, they, they feel good, you're validating them, then throw in your job, craziest one you can come up with, and see if anyone stops to ask you questions. And mm -hmm. so they did. We had two guys, went out. One guy was a donkey proctologist. That was the job he came up with. And another guy was a humpback whale dentist. And they, <laughs> they had to go out and build rapport and then throw, interject these jobs in their conversation, and nobody stopped them, even asked. No, a couple raised eyebrows, but then continued on talking about themselves. And, and it, it is just a nature. It's human nature. People don't care about you. They care about talking about themselves. So, yeah. you know, your, your, your worries and fears that people were going to maybe catch something, um, if it was glaringly obvious, maybe, but you were also very good at building your pretext very quickly and that, that helped people trust you. And your questions, you st also were intelligent in the way you started the questions. You didn't come out with the deepest questions first that would have made the red flag go up. You used a, a common principle called uh, concession, and you started small. You started with little questions, and then you built up to the big point questions, which made them feel more comfortable because they were already in the mode of answering. So overall, all I can say, Lily, great job this year. Congratulations on winning the for being the first woman ever to win the SECTF, winning yourself a black badge, all the other prizes that you got from uh, Ace Hackware and, and, and Social Engineer, and... Uh, representing the the women well as well as all of us great job hey thanks a lot well and and thanks for the experience you know you know you mentioned that i haven't taken any classes and i you know this is my um this is my second time to defcon uh, but the 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 podcast has been a, a great resource you know you guys uh give a lot of good information on the resource uh, or on the podcast, but then you also give, um, books, you know, you promote books from whoever you have on. And so I've, um, I've definitely read, uh, a, a number of those books in addition to other books on, you know, behavioral economics and, and things that are relevant to the topic. So I, I think it's, um, I think it's, uh, it's been a great, great resource to have you guys around and, uh, you know, I'd love to take your class sometime, learn Thank some you. more. 
So tell us then, to, to, stick, to stick with the, um, the theme that you brought up that we do, what's one book maybe you haven't heard on the podcast that you love that's helped you with uh, the type of thinking that you now have? Well, the, the type of behavioral economics stuff that um, both Daniel Kahneman, who wrote Thinking Fast and Slow, and Dan Ariely, who wrote um, uh, The Upside of Irrationality and Predictably Irrational, um, that kind of work, uh, the kind of studies that they do there um, is a great resource to learn about why we act the way we do or how we can, um, I guess, influence or manipulate others. You know, they talk about things like baselining, uh, baselining other people or um, putting people in other frames of mind, uh, but basically putting people into the correct uh, frame of mind. Uh, to get whatever you want out of them. Excellent. Yeah, that's a really that's a really good book for us because um, we we talk a lot about framing on the podcast, as you know, and I don't think we really had a book that um, that we featured uh, about that. Yeah, that's that's pretty cool. Cool. Well, Lily, uh, hopefully we'll get a chance to see more of you and um, hear you again, and um, for the next year you get to wear the reigning crown of the winner of the SECTF. So uh, congratulations on that again, and thank you for making time to come on the podcast for us. Yeah, absolutely. So I guess we will uh, we'll catch you later. All right. Thanks a lot. Bye. Bye-bye. Thanks, Lily. Bye-bye. Bye. Uh, so Ping, Dave left and didn't even say goodbye. But of course he did. So he didn't want you to chew him. I think he left to free. Common courtesy flees him. <laughs> Oh, Ping, I miss you. Oh, wait, positive reinforcement, right? <laughs> um, I'm glad that he got his priorities straight and went to tend to his clients. That's just, I know. Tell he's me on, how I'm supposed to make this into positive. He's going on TV. Somebody. He's going on Michelle, TV. Michelle, tell me how I'm supposed to turn this into positive reinforcement. I, I don't even know how I can possibly do it. It's like... <laughs> Well, you reinforce behavior that you want to improve. Positive reinforcement is the addition of an object or a thing. It's the introduction of something that will continue to increase the behavior that you're trying to elicit. So what is the behavior we're trying to elicit? That he's on time, more productive, and... And stay through the whole podcast. So we need to find something that is of worth to him that will increase that behavior. Like, say, he gets a six-pack of his favorite beer every time he completes a oh, podcast. Gosh, every time he is on time and every time he completes. I don't know. That's, 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 For instance. That's too much effort, you know? I mean, I just ask you guys and you come <laughs> and you show up and you're there and you're productive. I don't have to buy you stuff. Yeah. You bought T-shirts for us. I did, but I bought T-shirts for Dave, too. Well, that's the thing, that the value, the reinforcer is in the eyes of the receiver. Maybe he hates your T-shirts. Well, that's possible, I guess. Anything's possible. That would be sad. That would make me sad to think that, but, you know, it can happen. Okay, well, let's think. What do we got? Ping, we didn't get a chance to chat with you in the beginning. So, as we conclude, what is going on in your life? Everything good? Everything's great. I am just trying to recover from a <coughs> post-conference cough. Yes. <coughs> but the conference was my first time attending it as a consumer versus a producer because, you know, as people know, I have ran that event, Black Hat, for 13 years, and I helped out at DEF CON for about that many years, 12. Um, so how was it your so first I- year as a, as a plebe? You know, I <laughs> actually it was interesting because of all the new people at Black Hat did not remember. They don't know who I am. And oh. as I was standing in line to pick up my badge, everyone was like, no, no, no. Just tell them who you are. And I said, they don't know who I am. And I'm also opposed to giving someone special treatment just because of supposedly, quote unquote, who they are. Um, so it was really an interesting experience to see it from that perspective from the perspective of someone who's attending the conference and it was good for me because I actually didn't spend as much time thinking oh I would have done it this way oh I would have done it that way I actually spent a lot of time I was actually able to spend a lot of time talking to people who I've known for a decade who I never had more than a chance to just say hello in passing 
So how because was when you're running the conference? It's crazy. I will say, as a consumer from our end, a uh, trainer, um, the class was great. It was set up. We besides the internet being really slow. I mean, their connection. Yeah, well, their, but was, that's the same every year, right? Yeah. Somebody decides to tour something. Yeah, it was it was pretty crappy. Um, it was slower than previous years, but I will say we didn't go down like like we did every other year. Every other year, usually we were down, but things were on time. Um, the we had a, we had multiple people that were the runners for our class, so mm-hmm. we we didn't wait for things, and um, everything went pretty smooth for us. Um, Great. Yeah, I mean, from a from a training perspective, it was it was good. The class was what we wanted and what we needed. And everything was there as we asked, so it was um, it was exactly what we what we needed for the class. It was kind of good. Yeah, I actually sat through the Multigo class. How and was so that? So I got to part- It was an it's an awesome class. Everyone should take it. It's a completely different way of thinking and seeing and visualizing um, information and how to obtain information. Kind of the correlations that you have to make to uh, dig up information. Yeah, I love those um, guys. I really do. And yeah. I, now with the addition a, today, you see the news, Maltigo joining up with Metasploit. Yep. I Ooh. mean, it's a terrific, terrific uh, piece of software. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, um, you know, that was great. So I actually got to see it from a t- an attendee, a true attendee's perspective. And um, yeah, I mean, everything ran really smoothly during the training and everything seemed to run really smoothly during the briefings, you know, they the only confusion was unfortunately around what they wanted to do for Barnaby Jack, yeah. you know, who passed away yep. uh, right before the conference. And everyone was kind of, uh, I felt that some people were getting a little bit upset because they were like, what are we doing for him? What are we doing for him? And it's really tough for the conference organizers to just throw something together last minute and to message it out. So, uh, you know, I, was, I think it's great that they did do, you know, they dedicated his session room and let people, you know, talk about their experiences with Barnaby and share that. Um, that was the only thing that was a little bit rough, but that's very last minute and there's not, you know, it's really tough to message it out, you know, to 6,000 people because no one wants to turn on their phone at Black Hat. No one wants to send an email at Black Hat, (laughs) right? right? And there's not like, it's not like on the football field where there's like a big, you know, screen to say, you know, this is what we're doing. But, you know, every, as a whole, the event ran very, very smoothly. That's good. That's good. Yeah, for us, it was great. Our training went awesome. DEF CON was probably the most successful year ever. Um, and what else, Michelle? What else we got going on? We just released our 2014 training schedule on the website, so that's pretty cool. Yeah, and we're working on um, an advanced class to be announced later this year. Ooh, releasing the juicy details. I'm super excited about that. Yeah, it's going to be a big one. We're going to have to really plan that announcement out because I'm ultimately excited about that one. <clears throat> and we're just busy as heck. I mean, I don't really understand how we're this busy, but we are. I, I blame it on you, Michelle. I blame it all on you. Actually, I blame it on what? Ping. <laughs> blame it on the two women. I blame it on Ping because you introduced me to Michelle, so it's actually your fault. Well, okay, another great podcast, ladies. And uh, Dave is gone, so we're ending on a high note. If you want to follow us, you've got us on our website, social-engineer.org or social-engineer.com. On Twitter, we are Human Hacker. Corporate Twitter is SOC Engineer Inc. you got our Facebooks on both those pages. You want to follow us. If not, that's fine. We understand social media is the devil. On IRC, you have channel social-engineer on irc.freenode.net. We will talk to you all next month. For those of you out at Derby, sorry we're going to miss you, um, as we just talked about, but hopefully we'll get there next year. See you. See you, small talk, conversation, banter. Really, I'm just probing while I'm listening for answers. Yeah, there's plenty of policies, but no one follows standards. Thanks to all the folks who come to work with different landings. Max, right, bottom marks, all your art and tags, but no one's really looking at my counterfeited badge. Even still, though, there's not a chance to see. You can tell by how I walk. I've got somewhere else to be. Cause I'm confident Like I'm in a hurry Like I've got work to do Like I'm going places Welcome one and all to this fun competition Except nobody knows if there's any opposition Face so friendly, smile disarms Everything's good, no cause for alarm Cause I'm like you, and likewise the same But for you this is work, and for me it's a game Give a thumbs up if you know what I'm saying Next round starting, believe that I'm Ah no signal, my battery is finished. Hey, could I go and use your phone for a minute?
weeks, yo, I had to make a call to play it down While my root kit X filled your data to the cloud Plan to stall, stand up all, gotta take my time Scanning all your systems, the ones you didn't wipe Scamming y'all, I got terabytes of drives Cannonball, in the dumpster when I died Black and white, all the info with the details And what type of person really prints out emails Still intact, all the sentences and questions I mean, paper shredders really aren't that expensive Yep, we want it all, the kit and caboodle It's not that impressive, I just know how to Google Found the CEO with the social network name Sir, no, the school core, we're just leveraging the framework Welcome one and all to this fun competition Except nobody knows if there's any opposition Face so friendly, smile disarms Everything's good, no cause for alarm Cause I'm like you, and like why it's the same, but for you this is work, and for me it's a game. Give a thumbs up if you know what I'm saying. Next round starting, believe that I'm playing. Welcome one and all to this fun competition, except nobody knows if there's any opposition. Face so friendly, smile disarms, everything's good, no cause for alarm. Cause I'm like you, and likewise the same, but for you this is work, and for me it's a game. Give a thumbs up if you know what I'm saying. If you know, if you, if you know what I'm saying. fun competition except nobody knows if there's any opposition face so friendly smile disarms everything's good no cause for alarm because i'm like you and likewise the same but for you this is work and for me it's a game give a thumbs up if you know what i'm saying next round starting believe that i'm playing Thumbs up if you know what I'm doing.